Hi, everyone. Sean Jones, CEO of the iNetrepreneur Network. And I am really excited because I have Tim Johnson, who is not just a business associate of ours, but he's also a friend. He's a mentor. He works a lot uh, on behalf of women and children. He's an established entrepreneur, coach. He's just an incredible incredible, dynamic individual. Uh, and he is he is someone that you definitely need to reach out and meet. Tim, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So Tim, obviously I can, you know, rave about you all day long and so can uh, Robert. But then as you know, I always love to get to know the person behind the business. Because as adults, you meet somebody for the first time and the first words out of our mouth is, so what do you do, Right. But, and that's great. I don't want to talk about what you're doing professionally. I want to know a little bit about Tim, the man Johnson, you know, kind of where did you start out and what kind of led you up to where you're at today? Well, my backstory, which is not a curse, it's a gift. You know, my, my dad was executed on death row on national TV and, you know, come to find out some interesting stories, even since the last time we talked, I don't know if I remember telling you, is that my new daughter-in-law, her grandmother's first cousin was one of my dad's victims. And then I actually found my family, my real family, after 30 years, just almost two years ago, August, and have have got a great relationship with the rest of my family because of that down in uh, Tennessee. And so just, you know, foster home at foster home, just lots of trouble. And you know what I mean? I just, uh, You know, ever since I was nine years old, biggest thing I'm working on right now is my compound, right? So, you know, everybody, some of the speakers that I know have come out to my house and are, you know, I don't really talk about it, but, you know, I have seven acres. And so I have my own landscaping shop, my own wood shop. I got my own, you know, mechanic shop. So everything's like all encompassing and we're building a new home. And again, it's just, you know, it's, it's the 80, 20 rule, right? It's just years ago. And what some of the things like when Robert made you CEO, right? And like, to me, that was common sense. Okay. So a lot of the simple things, like every woman wants to be you now, because a lot of women entrepreneurs, and I try to give the science to it. You remember Robert's like, no, it ain't going to work. I'm like, dude, I'm not talking from, I'm not trying to give you an opinion. I'm trying to give you my experience Mm -hmm. and just being in the back of the room. Cause if you, right. I just, I came from the street. So common sense is common sense. You know, you treat a woman like a queen, she'll make you a king. And it just, it works in business too. So a lot of the the different things that I would brought up in business was a lot of the things that I came up in childhood, you know, watching my sisters, what worked, what didn't work. And a lot of that just comes into today. I didn't, I'm not trying to do something. I don't have goals. I have obligations. And, you know, just, you know, as COVID has been on and and just doing many of the things I do, it empowers me to empower children and women because they're the next generation. You know, and I use this kind of a caveat to it. It's like, think about it. If you watch a lion, I don't know if you ever like watching TV or not, but if you ever watch a lioness, right? She's a lion in the field. Like the female lion is the one that does all the hunting, does most of this, protects the pack. It's not until you have to step up to be the lion, right? So when people are fearing your, your students, your people, that's when you got to step up. And a lot of people in this industry call me an asshole. It's not I'm an asshole. I just got standards, you know, and a lot of it, we, what we attract, you know what I mean? You know, I was talking to Robert the other day. It's like, dude, how does it feel not to sell for the low amount we talked about, but getting into the higher amounts. And he's like, yeah, it's so much easier because right. It's PETA on it. And a lot of the different things is just, you know, I do that for fun. You know what I mean? Obviously, you know, I've loved watching you guys. I love that you named a car after me. I think that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. That's really cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nothing like writing Tim Johnson. And, and, and you know, the, the backstory, uh, since you touched on, you know, us naming our vehicle, it was actually our daughter who at the time was uh, seven, almost eight years old. And she had heard the conversations uh, that Robert and I have had about you and the mentorship and the different perspectives. And, you know, it's all business because we, you know, like you, kids are the future. And so we do bring them into conversations that talk about business and things that we learn. You know, we obviously don't go into all the details. Um, But it was enough that our daughter, seven years old, said, Tim Johnson's a great guy. Let's name the, the the truck Tim Johnson. And, you know, it really showed how much 
parents and adults can influence children and when they hear the positives that they just resonate with that and you're like that with you know with us big kids adults you know with with how you give your guidance so take us to what is it that you do today you work with i know so many different people across so many different industries well, you know, business is business, right? And and so I'm writing a new book right now called Happily Unemployable. And, you know, what you attract to the bedroom is what you're going to attract to the boardroom. People just don't get the concept. Like, if you're going to have a pain in the butt in your business, be careful what you're going to attract around your friends. Because your friends are your kids' as mentors, right? I take that seriously. I mean, do you remember the first time I told you, I don't work for you, I work for your kids? Because I'm probably going to piss you off along the way. Because, right, there's three investments in your life. There's time, money, and change. Right. If you're making 100 grand and you want to make 200 grand, it's not your time that you, you got to affect time. Right. It's a mathematical formula. Right. It, when you were when we first started, it was like you were selling packages for this. And I said, no, let's do this. Right. When I remember when, you know, it was Robert today, he's like, dude, like everybody shines. I'm like, yeah, brother, because you became the lion. You let the lionesses mm-hmm. in your life, you let those people thrive at what they're good at. OK. And it's common sense. Right. And when you work with people, what you say and what they hear is very different. And and the more you understand that, like, I've never said you should. I ask you, you may consider. Right. And I'm going to I'm going to call my brother out because I love the death. He's like, that won't work if she's CEO. I'm like, okay, but just consider it, dude. I'm just like, empower her to be that rock star that she was meant to be that nobody else did. And watch what happens. And he's even joking. He's like, dude. You're not going to believe what she does. I'm like, no, I believe it. Right? <laughs> that, 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 I, I get it, brother. But see, when you're on the stage and if a woman wants to be like you, they now have a safe place to go. Like, that's mm-hmm. common sense to me. Okay? Because being an alpha female, there's a lot, there's more uh, female entrepreneurs coming out right now that want to find a home. That don't feel like, you know, the, the typical culture says it's a man's world. That's actually not true. I mean, if you watch Undercover Billionaire and you watch, there was just as many women in there as there were men. They were high powerful. You just don't hear about them as much. Yeah. You know, and when I love what you guys were doing, that's why I kind of came alongside. I'm like, dude, let's consider doing this. And he's like, it works. Well, dude, I, I know it works. That's why I'm telling you. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to show you, but part of it is, is sometimes just giving a different perspective, right? It just is. Mm-hmm. When you get a different perspective, okay, like, how much more empowered do you feel being the CEO? Like, my business partner is the CEO of our company, right? She goes, and I got my I got my butt handed to me because I was going to have her name first on the book because that's just a methodology I live. It wasn't until Jack Campfield said, dude, she's not the serial killer's kid. You are. So your name has to be first. So then that was advice, right? We were in a group to do that. And part of connection yeah. is, is really listening with the right voice. You know, networking, connection. I mean, the only difference between marriage and friendship is just the intimacy, right? But if you treat it as such, you know, the people that don't want to belong to you will fall off. You know, yes or no, consider how many people have fell off from the first time I met you till now because you started having standards, right? It's a huge night and day difference. It is. Because part of the attraction was you wanted to do everything for free. Now, no, we don't do free, right? If you want free, listen, there's B&I. If you want network together where we do, we we serve your business to be unlike anything you've ever seen and you want to be in our family, this is what it costs. If you want to invest in your stuff, great. If you don't, right? Because, you know, givers never stop giving, but takers never stop taking. Exactly. Exactly. Tim, what type of people do you work with? What is what is your sweet spot for your clients? Because I mean, you can't and you touched on it. You can't serve everyone. So who do you like to work with? Who who really benefits from your knowledge? Um, that's it's So the, the knowledge pervades. Let me go two ways. The, the mindsets for everybody. OK, the businesses I like to do is it's the 80 20 rule. So. 20, if we're supposed to spend 80% of our time with the 20% of people we're for, what do we do with the other 80%? Right? In common sense, you've never seen a Ford tire on a Ford truck, right? It doesn't exist. So putting strategic partnerships or revenue streams with people um, 
is different. So I look for entrepreneurs that are, you know, making above two, 300 grand that wanted to want to excel like we did, right? We wanted to go, I want to raise prices. I want to create frequency and they really want to create a profit path. Okay. And the difference in a, in a profit path is no difference than dating, right? For example, when someone, you know, Robert and I were talking about this the other day, what's the next evolution when people graduate with the, from the high ticket of what we have at Network Together? What's that next step? Because we don't want to lose them. Because mm-hmm. they're going to look for that next step eventually. When, they, when they've gotten to a place in their business, they want the next step. Right. Like, for example, in sports, it's the NFL and hockey. It's, you know, I mean, it's all these things. It, it's a yeah. natural progression. And if we, we if we build the profit path right, they never have to go anywhere. And it's companies that are looking for their board of directors, because when you say something's hard, here's my tell. Is it hard or is it that you don't know you don't know anything about it? Why would you and consider a lot of these entrepreneurs, from my experience, They'll come, well, Timmy, the problem is, oh my, is it a problem or you're not good at it? There's a big difference between the two. Okay. So if we can strategically align them, right? For example, the reason that I love you guys is like they're every caveat network together, Phoenix, you can find within this group if you need it. Yeah. Okay. But we'll we'll go, well, I'm a CEO, I'm a coach, I'm a business coach. I'm like, you're an idiot. Because listen, if you're not good at it, Mathematically, it does not financially make sense for you to do it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the first time I told you I was going to raise your prices, right? Do you remember what Robert told me? Uh, not offhand, but I know there was a little kickback. <laughs> right. And I just said, well, listen, there's going to be certain people that do and certain people that don't. It's just a numbers game, right? Mm-hmm. But the more, if we don't offer it, when that person gets to that level, they want the next level. They want to fight for that next group. Because that's where they're trying to grow, right? And part of what we work on in businesses is really just aligning what they're good at, what they're not. And then strategically aligning them. Like, how many referrals have I made you guys just in the same ones that I have? I'm like, guys, so tell us different ones. It's just an extra revenue stream. If people need it, it's there. And really, when companies do that is, is, you know, if somebody's coming to me and they're going to tell me everything they know, then I'm not the right fit. Okay, because no farmer looks at his field and says, oh, I think I'm going to plant it. That doesn't happen. You know, and, you know, I've been, you know, my little brother knows, like we talk about Robert, I I never attacked him. Now, I've I've been, you know, sometimes when you're coaching, I don't don't want to be a cheerleader. Because I if I ever had to go to and again, say, for example, God forbid something ever happens. I never want to have to look at your kids in the face and say, hey, I failed your mom and dad. That ain't going to happen. It's just not going to be that. And and part of this caveat in business nowadays is people are trying to do everything on their own. That just doesn't make sense. No, no. And I mean, Tim, I know you and I can talk all day long. I know the value. I am so excited that you're going to be uh, on our traditional panel at the Art of Connection event. If somebody, though, wants to reach out and they don't want to wait until Tuesday to, to get in touch with you, how can they how can they call you? How can they get a hold of you? Um, text me 630-981-7245 or email me at T-I-M-N-R-U-1 at Gmail or hit me on Facebook. I mean, I'm, you know, not a problem. I love it. And do you have a website if somebody wants to, you know, social media stock you? Oh, Lord. TimothyRJohnson.com. <laughs> TimothyRJohnson.com. All right, Tim, I want to thank you so much. As always, it is a true pleasure to be able to just have this time. And, and I always walk away going, oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, yes, we're doing that. Yes, we are doing exactly where we're, we're at, where we're supposed to be. And, you know, thank you for everything. And I'm super proud of you guys. Thank you. All right. We will see you on Tuesday. All right.